Well, guys, let's get started. We're, we're going to crank this, and I, I tell you what we're going to get through today. Uh, I want to share a dream I had. First of all, in Ezekiel 1, 15 and 16, you, you, you can look at it later, but you ever remember reading the will or the, the will within a will? You remember that about that thing that, that Ezekiel saw? And, and, and very few can, can grasp the meaning of that. Well, Fiddler and I were driving down the road the other day, and all of a sudden we passed these, these trucks of tires. And I don't know because it's in my, and I made a comment. I said, well, I bet they're tired. You know, it's a bad joke, but anyway, <laughs> tired of driving. And we, so we went bannered back and forth till we started hating each other for opening that door. <laughs> but the point is, there are all these tires, and I'm looking how these tires were. They're like tires within tires. And maybe because of that, but when I got back that night, man, I crashed out after that drive. And I'm laying there, and I have this dream. Now, bear with me here. I don't, I, you know, this is one of those. Pastor Jason sent me a thing. When, when, when sperm penetrate an egg, light explodes. You remember that? Have you ever seen that? Go online and look at it. It's the craziest thing you'll ever see. You talk about light. When, when that thing struggles and it gets in there and all of a sudden, just an explosion of light. That's creation. See, Jesus, like the light of this world, you're, you're seeing that creation even there. And so I have this dream about God was sitting in the midst of these wheels. And I mean, there's eyeballs on these wheels and everything's going just like it says in Ezekiel. And all of us were standing outside. And, and we were trying to, you remember like jump rope? You got to get that right thing to jump in there. You know, you got to get that momentum and, that, 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 and the jump in. Well, I saw people hitting it and bouncing off, hitting it and bouncing off. And I'm trying, to, I'm trying to hit it and I'm bouncing off. And it was like that sperm trying to penetrate that egg for reproduction to cause growth. And all of a sudden, we just kept doing it. And, and, and all of a sudden, I hear this voice speak to me very clearly. He said, he said, here's what you're trying to do. You're trying to bring the outside into my inside. You can't do that anymore. This is a holy place. Don't you bring that in here. So I'm trying to carry all this into that center part of God. See, the wheel within the wheel, that's where God is. That's, where, that's, where Je- that's the throne. That's where Jesus is. And I'm trying to bring this in with me. And he said, wait a minute. No, you're, you need to bring me this way. You bring me out of that. You, you, you kind of co- coerce me out. You kind of draw me out. You draw me into that. Don't you draw this into me. This the place where you are is holy. And so I said, well, Lord, how did I get in there? He said, I'm straight. He said, that's the problem. He said, let me tell you how you connect to me, beloved, and why God in the center of that will. Prayer is one of the main things that connect us to the centrality of God. When we pray, it just shoots us. It's just like that sperm hitting that egg. It shoots us right. There's no struggle with it. And God even helps. Listen, even helps the angels coming down to help us answer that prayer and get us in there. But we, prayer connects us to the centrality of God. And so if you want to see things happen, let's not just think about it and wish about it and go to church about it. Let's pray about it. Let's pray about it in such a unique way that it will literally just ram into the very center heart of the Holy of Holies, the holiest place. That's where God is. See all the I don't know about you, but, you know, hey, the outer court is kind of cool. There's, there's, there's wash. We can get clean and, and sacrifice. We can do that. But then there's another place where the table of showbread and the candlesticks are. And, and say, we, can, we can get there and hang out in there. Priests had a robe, uh, rope tied around them, but not there, not in the outer courts or the middle courts. But when they went into the inner court, when they went into the holy place, the holy of holies, when they got into the centrality of God, There was something on them that if they died there, if something happened and they couldn't get out, man was to pull them out. I am sick and tired of men and women pulling us out of the centrality of God. If we get into the center of God and die there, then that is birth for us. We've got to get to that center place, and we can't do it with a five-minute, oh, God, if you think about it, you know, know, we, we... 
Let me just show you. You ready? You better buckle down. Ah, yes. By the way, 4 o'clock this morning, my leg was on fire. I thought I was going to pass away. And uh, I got up. I was having massive Charlie horse. You ever had one of those Charlie horses? People, I've had one where my right foot stuck to my butt one time. I, I, I am crawling down the hallway to get to find potassium in Jesus. So, true story. I crawl in there. I don't want to turn the light on to, to get Carol up. So I go in there, and uh, I thought they were potassium tablets, but they were Shakely's uh, Herblax. I encountered the Trinity. <laughs> True story. So now I'm very careful. But anyway, I got up and I thought, you know what? This is my Sunday. This is Sunday. What is it? And I mean, so I'm hopping around in there, walking all through the house, just praying. And about 5.15, man, everything broke. It was great. And so, you know, look. I guess I'm, I'm ready for war prayer. You know what I'm saying? I like that war prayer. All right, here we go. Uh, wasn't that interesting about the Lord told me about everything is present in the center of him, but outside, e- e- even all this outside stuff needs to be outside. Uh, Paul talked about prayer, and I want to talk about, you know that prayer Connects us to the center of God, but he has delegated authority to us. What, is, what does delegates mean? If you're a delegate to a Republican or Democratic Party, what does that mean? You have certain rights. You vote for people. You can get in and out, right? All right. You guys realize that God has delegated authority to you and I, that we can come boldly into that center part of God? We can leave all this junk outside and walk right in there boldly before the Father. Uh, he says, I will give you the keys of the kingdom, right? Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. You remember that? That's Matthew 16, 19. Write that down. It won't be on the screen. Nothing will be on the screen just yet. Now, God has given us special authority, delegated authority to bind and loose things. You believe that? We should. We just read it. We just read it. John 17, 17 says, thy word is truth. All right, now listen. Now this verse appears to indicate, it's pretty cool, that when we bind something, the spirit down here on earth, when we bind something, the decision is backed up in heaven. Now that's a cool understanding. So if I bind sickness down here, it's backed up in heaven. If I loose health here, it's backed up in heaven. So I have this Greek, it's just nothing but Greek words, and I'll tell you, it's, 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 it's not a fun read, but it is the most revelatory educational read that I have. So I read that verse in the Greek, and here's what it says. Whatever you bind on earth will have been bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will have been loosed in heaven. In other words, the, 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 the decision to bind and loose is not with us, but with heaven. Now, I want you to hear the importance of this. This is amazing, which simply means that when we are sensitive in prayer to the leading of the Holy Spirit, he identifies the area that he wants bound and loosed. It's not us binding and loosing. It's the Holy Spirit giving us what to bind and loose. And once that happens, that means it has already happened in heaven because you got to understand something about time. Uh, there says there's no shadow in him. What does that mean? Shadow indicates 12 noon. There is no shadow at 12 noon. It's under our feet. Isn't that interesting? Jesus is like 12 noon all the time. Eternity past, present, and future are simultaneous to him. You realize that he's the alpha, the omega, the beginning, and the end. All he has to do is look his eyeballs this way, Pass all the way back to Adam. All the way, look this way, all the way to the great white, uh, the, the Bema seat of Christ, the new heavens and new earth. Just look. That's all you got to do. And it says his eyes move to and fro. What's he looking for? A heart that's what? 
somewhat his, a partial his. What's it say? Completely. Oh, you lost me there, Lord. If our heart is not completely his, if we're sharing that heart with other things, then don't count on the strong support of Jesus. That's what it says. He's not going to violate his word. When he told those boys to lay their nets down on that side of the boat and they laid one net on the wrong side of the boat, everything broke. But when they did exactly what Jesus told them to do, thy word is truth, when he did it, they caught more fish that every boat on the Sea of Galilee got blessed. Beloved, the time is upon us. We cannot do partial word. We have to be, our hearts have to be settled if I don't want God to strongly support me, then we got to quit grappling because it doesn't happen. But if my heart and your heart is completely his, he is going to strongly support you. That's his promise. And his promises are what? Yes and amen. So let's talk about enforcing God's will. Would you go ahead and drop that up? Enforcing God's will. Let's go ahead and look up Matthew 6, 9 10. Uh, pray then in this way. Now, here we go. Our Father who, uh, who is in heaven. Now, I love that first thing. They said, Jesus, tell us how to pray. He didn't say my Father. What did he say? Oh. Wasn't that awesome? He's already identified with you and I, beloved. Our Father, our Father who is in heaven. Uh, look at that. Hallowed. In other words, absolutely, your name is to be exhausted. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Beloved, listen. If we're not sane, praying, eating, drinking, living, that verse, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, we're missing the mark. Can you imagine if we lived that scripture, not us, not us, but your will be done, your kingdom come, your will be done on this earth as it is in heaven. Think of it, beloved. Think of the prosperity. Think of the healings. Think of the salvations. Think of the things for the kingdom. Oh, my, 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 my. We are to see God's will done on earth as in heaven. Prayer, by the way, is defined by the will of God according to the scripture. It's not our will. It's God's will. They said, Jesus, how do we pray? And he said, our Father, you do it this way. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as is in heaven. When we pray from here on out, say, Father, your will be done. Jesus did it on the cross. In the garden, you remember they said, not my will, but your will be done. Jesus lived that prayer. Beloved, when we come to him from here on out, just say, Father, your will be done. Not my will, but your will be done on earth right now as it is in heaven through me. And this is what we do. We come into such a way we can get into that holy place. We get into that place to where no man can go into. Listen, we're not mere men. We're not mere women. We are different. Kind. Guys, we are, we are downright aliens. We are not of humankind anymore. We have been not refurbished. We've just been, well, we've been recreated. We are a new creation, not new creature. Scripture says we are a new creation. Darwin ain't got the word for us. It's not in his book. They can find species of this and species of that. We're not there. Come on. Here we go. Prayer is defined by the will of God. And I'm going to tell you about the cutting edge. Ephesians 6, 12 through 18. Can you put that up? All right, let's start with 17. That's even better. And take the helmet of salvation, which is the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And with what? All prayer. You see that? All prayers. All prayer. And petition, pray at all times. And wait, wait a minute. Pray without ceasing. All prayers and what? All petitions at all times be made in the spirit. Now, I believe that's a capital S, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. If it was a little S, what are we talking about? Our human spirit. But this is in the Holy Spirit. Listen, we pray to God in the name of Jesus through the Holy Spirit. We cannot go to heaven any other way but that way. Don't be in a rush to call upon the name of the Lord. Start with God. Hallowed be thy name, God. Go ahead and blast God for about 30, 45 minutes. And oh, by the way, let's talk about your son. 
and go ahead and rock Jesus' world for about another 30, 45 minutes. And oh, by the way, Holy Spirit, thank you that you're interceding with groaning and you're taking exactly what I need to go to the very heart of God. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that it can't come by any way but through you. Now make your petition known and see what happens. I'm telling you, every door that's in heaven, if there is one, will get knocked wide open for the prayer to be answered just like that. See, I believe that's what happened to Daniel in chapters 9 and 10. God said, I heard your prayer the very moment it came out of your mouth. Because you remember those four things he talked about? He did it, he did it reading the word. He did it with, with full conviction. He did it identifying with the people. And he did it with the best motives. That's prayer, beloved. Now, listen, it says all kinds of prayer. What, listen, prayer is expressed in many different ways as led by the Holy Spirit for that occasion. We just can't get used to doing the rote prayers all the time. The same old prayer. Well, Lord, thank you for lunch. Thank you. It was all good. Mm. You know? Dinner ought to get cold sometime by the time we finish prayer for lunch. Can you, can you take this back and reheat this, please? I've been praying. Now, listen. I want you to put this up. Would you put up prayer should be our instinctive reaction. This is one of the most profound things that the Lord has given me. You got it? You see it, David? Keep on going down. Don't worry about 1 Timothy. We'll get to there in a minute. Prayer should be our instinctive reaction to any situation that contradicts the will of God. Beloved, you can bank on that one. You can take that to the house. Prayer should be our, what does instinctive mean? It should be second nature. There it is. Man, I got to pray. I got to pray. And somebody said, well, you know, I, I just don't have that prompting to pray. Well, ah, better get saved. How can you have to be prompted to pray when scriptures already told us to pray without ceasing? Walk around with songs, songs, and spiritual hymns, making melody hard. Pray without ceasing. Rejoice, rejoice. Again, I say rejoice. All these command, commands. Not because God's unruly and God's a dictator and God's uh, uh, this, this bad emperor up there. It's because when we walk in this, all the doors are open to heaven. And what is in heaven is now being released here. You realize, you know what's bound in heaven, by the way? Name me a sick folk in heaven. Name me a dead folk in heaven. Name me an, an unprosperous person in heaven. Name me a glutton. Name me a liar. Name me something like that that's in heaven. No. I want what's bound in heaven bound here. I want what's loosed in heaven here. Why not? Why not? Go back to 1 Timothy 2 1 for me, bud. Let's put that up. First of all, then, I urge. That entreaties, prayers, petitions, thanksgivings be made on behalf of all men. Now, there's your listing of prayer. Entreatings, prayers, petitions, and thanksgiving. Uh, that word, uh, petitions and thanksgiving, is actually a word for intercession. And we're going to cover that. By the way, I won't be able to get all this done today, but we are going to cover that Wednesday night. You do not want to miss being here Wednesday in person or Wednesday night online to hear about intercession because it is mind-blowing and heart-gouging what's about to happen when we start interceding the right way for one another. It's going to be incredible. Now, let's talk about these prayers. The first one is requests, okay? Requests. Now, that's Matthew 7-7. Seven, seven. Let's, let's look at that. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. Does that need any explanation? But we have to do it for the right motives. So let me talk about requests. Now listen, requests are the most simplest and most common form of prayer, period, in, in, in the word. Now God has invited us to ask him for what? Anything. Say anything. You mean I can ask him about the burger I may try to have for lunch? Yeah, I can. Why would we want to shut God out of something like that? See, listen, we, 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 we've got into a habit. Beloved, oh, hear me, please. We've got into this habit. We've become selective when we let Jesus in. We'll let him in when there's a problem. 
We'll let him in when there's a situation. But, Lord, this is, this is some serious ribs. I just want to invite you into this right now. He'll eat them. He did something about that pork stuff. The point is, why wouldn't we want to invite him in to what we were doing unless we're ashamed to have him there? If there's something in our life that we don't want Jesus in sitting next to us, ooh, how important is that going to be in the kingdom? Oh, my God, I think I'm getting saved all over again. The Greek word for translated has two meanings. I want you to see this, and it is absolutely cray-cray. Supplication is to ask or beseech. You know, like your children wanting something. They beseech you. Maybe besiege might even be a better word. Ask. Mama, 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 mama. Can I, can I ask you? Ask, ask. We just got through reading. Ask, and it what? It won't be given. Is that what it says? Lord, I'm going to ask you for the right reason, the right motive, but you're not going to give it to me, so why bother to ask? I promise you, he'll give it to us. Trust him on that. In fact, he said, don't tempt me, but test me to see if I'm good. See, goodness of God is one of our core values. I believe God is good all the time. Oh, even when he's making all those earthquakes and famines and pestilence and COVID, you know, that kind of God that's killing everybody because there's judgment coming. Listen, I'm going to tell you, be careful what kind of spirit that is. Don't you call that down on, 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 my, on my nation. I believe God is a healer. He's not the instigator. That's sin, and that's the devil. That's the instigator of COVID-19. It's not God. Don't, don't, don't you dare throw him in that. In fact, you're going to see that answer here in just a second. You ask, you beseech. You go at God and say, Lord, by the way, do you think he knows what we're going to ask for? Yeah. yeah. See, he already knows. He already got this down. He just, in fact, how do you know the answer isn't already there before we even ask it? And all we have to do is tap into it. But we get tired. We, oh, we don't go the extra mile. But here's the one that messed me up. And this is where a river is going to change. You ready? Look at the next one. You ever heard of deprecation before? Go back to deprecation. Deprecation. To speak disapproval of. When was the last time, because of all this rioting and all this this bad stuff. I'm not talking about good people with good intentions to see lives change. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about these idiots that are full of lawlessness, that all they want to do is kill, steal, and destroy because they're of the spirit of their father, the devil. Ephesians 2.6. I'm talking about when people go, keep God out of this, this, and that. I'm telling you, this is where we speak disapproval that God is being slandered in this nation. We get so righteously, my house should be a house of what? Prayer. And you've turned it into a den of thieves, a den of robbers. You've turned it into a place to sell and make money for yourself. Jesus went in there and whooped butt. That's in the Hebrew. He made a he made a skirt. He went up there and pulled some special bull rush. And I mean, he whooped them. Because that was deprecative action. That was deprecative prayer right there. You have met God, you are, you are slandering God in the temple of my father. You are talking. About, when was the last time that we got upset because the world is trashing out Jesus? Hey, I'm going to tell you straight up. Be a Muslim and pull that on Muhammad and see what happens. They'll find your grave. Is that the kind of God we want to serve? No. I want to serve the God of love, joy, peace, kindness, goodness, self-control. Against these things, there's no law. But, beloved, we need, we need to start taking offense to the world, the flesh, and the devil that speaks about our Jesus in a certain way. We can't watch shows anymore that make Jesus look common. The Word of God says that, that when we profane, if we, 
When we profane that no coarse words, no coarse jesting, I'm not talking about telling an off-colored joke. You think God can't handle that? The word profanity comes from the word to profane, and the word to profane comes from the Greek understanding means to make common. You want to profane God? Don't cuss at him. Just make him common. Make Jesus common like Joe and Fred. He's not common. And we're not sons and daughters of a common man. We're sons and daughters of the king. The king. And he didn't become king after he did all this stuff. He was born king. Oh, beloved. Ask, beseech. But where there's injustice. Uh, let, me, let me write you. In fact, if you want to see this type of thing. Go to 2 Kings. Just put that up there. I'm not going to give you the whole thing. It's long. But go to 2 Kings 19, 9 through 19. 2 Kings 19, 9 through 19. And read it this week. And you'll get a little bit of an understanding what a saint is upset with. That God is being slandered. His name is being muddied. He's being torn down. He's being made, made to be... A, Just like sitcoms today make men, make fathers look to be imbeciles. You notice that? Make no mistake who's in control down here. Satan is prince and power of the airwaves. But I don't serve a prince. We serve a king. He may get to dabble right now in the airwaves, but I guarantee you his time is about up. Ooh, come on. And we're going to be there to see it. The second thing is prayers. Let's put that up. And then we're going to be closed. Prayers in the original Greek means of pouring out. See, I'm talking, it's not simple just asking. It's not just asking. It's the pouring out of the depths of our heart expressed to God. Sometimes it's with tears. Sometimes it's, it's what is dearest. It's not just saying the words. It's the pouring out. One of Carol's that she's used in, in talking about when she talks about worship to God is a Greek word called proskino. You ever heard that term before? Proskino, pro means to go before, kino means down. And so what it is, when, is, is means to kiss toward God. When you and I pray and we worship, we're in proskino. We're proskino. We're kissing towards God. Isn't that awesome? And, and I'm going to tell you, guys, listen, sometimes when we just get to prayers, we need to just let go in our heart and not hold back. If, if, if you're a big snot ball at the end of it, be a snot ball. The ground should be saturated. Listen, there's times in dreams that I've travailed and prayed. We're going to talk about that Wednesday night, that the entire bed was saturated. Carol woke up and saw that I was in trail one day, and the Holy Spirit told her, don't wake him up. Then I'm what? I'm battling in the Spirit. Don't wake him up. And I'm telling you, I'm a, I was afraid that if she did wake me up, it may have cost me. But if we went through, and that's the one Bob Jones told me about later. We brought him down. He said, well, I saw you in that dream. I, it, that, that messed me up, but that's another story. By the way, you can go to 1 Samuel 1, 9 through 15. 1 Samuel 1, 9 through 15 to see what that is about that type of prayer. 1 Samuel 1, 9 through 15. Amen? All right, now Listen. The third part of this, and then there's a fourth part, but I'm going to do intercession Wednesday night. So don't miss that. It's it's going to be a hummer. All right. So what do we hear about today? You want to connect to the will of God? Prayer is the will of God. You want to connect to the central of God? Pray. And with prayer, I'm telling you right now, doesn't it say that we are to beseech the Lord of the harvest? Pray to the Lord of the harvest. Pour out ourselves to the Lord of the harvest to do what? Send workers. Listen, unless you want some other group of believers to get all of the goodies, then pray for the Lord to send those workers out. But I'm a tad bit selfish still. I want him to send us out. See, I want what God has for you and I, not what he has for them. That's great, but that's them. This is us. Amen? Father, thank you for your word today. As we get ready to receive your offering, we receive your love. We thank you for all that you've done. Lord, I speak over this group of of brothers and sisters and sons and daughters. Father, the greatest upheaval of prayer in your life. Lord, let it come like a volcano today. 
that all of a sudden these prayers, supplications, treaties of God and, 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 and these the beseeching and deprecations will come out like fire in their mouth, Father, fire, Father, to do something and penetrate the coldest place, penetrate the hardest place. Let what proceeds out of our mouth will not come back empty and void from this day forward. We thank you, Father. This is a new day in the life of the River Church of Plano. And we will not look back from this day forward, Father. Everything that we say, everything that we do, everything that we sing, everything that we dance, everything that we move around, all the cameras, all the computers, the carpet, the roof, the floor, everything, everything. To your glory, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen, amen.